Hello everybody, E here, back again with another audiobook review. Uh, I am slowly, kind of, not really weaning myself, not weaning myself off, but I'm slowly uh, getting back into reading, but uh, this is my fourth audiobook in a row. I've just been blowing through them, and today we are talking about Optic Nerve by Maria Gainza. Alright, this is an odd book to talk about because not a whole lot goes on in like the the present tense in this book um this where this book really shines is the historical aspect of it uh Gainza goes through several several different points in history several di several different cultures uh there is a very heavy argentinian um uh history uh, art history is what this book is about art history um i haven't said that already uh, it goes into Japanese history, all different kinds of stuff. And while there's not too much going on in the present time in the book, because she keeps flashing back to what happened to all these artists that she admires and appreciates, um, while there's not much going on, I was utterly captivated by all of the history, all the other culture stuff. I had a tremendous amount of fun learning about these artists. Uh, the narrator. Now, here's here's one of the here's one of the uh, the issues that that I might have had with the book had it not been for the um, the, the fascinating historical content. Um, I didn't really get too much as far as the narrator was concerned, and as far as the rest of the characters, I've just I mean I just finished it this morning and I've completely blanked on any of their names. Now I can go and I can look it up, but I feel that would be dishonest. So, while I didn't get a strong sense of character, it was almost as if I was reading a very intriguing, and this is going to sound bad, but textbook. Um, his, his, book on history, whatever, my, whatever you want to call it. Um, a, a narrative nonfiction is what it felt like. Uh, now, that's not the case. The book is fiction. Um, it does, it hops back and forth very um, interestingly. Uh, it's some of the one certain sections are some of the best second person point of view writing that I've read. Uh, the last time I read good second person was Kia Wilson's uh, "We Eat Our Own," and that was pretty much built just like this one. There's third person, uh, there is first person, and there's second person. Kia Wilson's book is the same. The the big difference here is Kia Wilson's is kind of like a horror literary horror. This one is just literary fiction. Um, I enjoyed every every part of this um i was i will be honest i was playing animal crossing but i've been playing animal crossing with all of my uh all the audiobooks it's really easy to get into that game especially once you know it it's really easy to put on an audiobook and just kind of get lost in fishing or whatever you need to do to get your nook miles points anybody out there playing animal crossing let me know down there in the doobly-doo i already got several friends and if you want to leave your switch code or send me your switch code on twitter in a dm or an email, that's fine. My email address is edwardlorn at gmail.com, so hit me up there. Um, just give me your Switch friend code, or I'll send you mine. It doesn't matter. Uh, but anyways, back to this book. Uh, I, I, I can't really, I'm, I'm struggling to try and find something, some kind of criticism, but I can't really find it. I shouldn't have liked it because the characters didn't, I didn't connect with them, which was the problem that I had with David Saloy's uh, book. That, you know, I, I shouldn't have liked it for that reason. I shouldn't have liked it because I don't like second person uh, POV writing. And I don't care too much for historical fiction. But, as with Andrew Davidson's The Gargoyle, the historical stuff in this one is done so extremely well. In fact, I went back and I, I looked up several of the things that she talks about. And they all actually happened, or these people actually existed, so on and so forth. There was a, a, a war, I, th I can't remember, it was like the triple something war that I, I'd never even heard of. And that's a lot of where, that, that's, like I said, that's exactly where this book shines, is the fact that she made, she made learning interesting, uh, for me anyways. Uh, if you're looking for a plot-heavy, character-heavy story, this probably isn't for you. The present stuff where you're actually going around with the narrator is fun and it's interesting, but it's you don't really get a, a feel for the character, at least I didn't. Um, but I'm going to give it five stars based solely on the fact that I did enjoy it and she made stuff that usually bores me 
really, really enjoyable. So have you read Optic Nerve? I'd love to hear what you th thought about it down there in the doobly-doo. If you liked it, tell me why you liked it. If you hated it, disliked it, felt meh, tell me why. We can't have a discussion unless you give me more input. But until next time, I have an E, you have been you. This has been another book review, audio book review, whatever you want to call it. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye!